Hello, I'm Sarah Wilson. I'm a research assistant and PhD student at Newcastle University. And today I'm going to take you through a bit of work that we've done exploring the key considerations for the design, development and implementation of digital technologies for the early detection of dementia causing diseases. And this is on behalf of the co-authors, Claire Tolley, Riona McArdle, Emily Beswick and Sarah Slide. Dementia causing diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease, start to develop in the brain up to two decades before symptoms start to show. But the tests that are currently used to detect and diagnose dementia causing diseases only assess the severity of dementia symptoms. And dementia symptoms can be quite severe and come with a hefty price tag for healthcare systems, as it's been estimated to cost the UK £94.1 billion by 2040 due to the mountain of health and social care costs that come with caring for someone with dementia. But recently, there's been a lot of interest in the role of wearable technologies to try and detect dementia causing diseases much earlier than currently possible. And if this approach is successful, it'll provide with, with the opportunity to implement interventions such as lifestyle changes or the latest medication a lot earlier than currently possible to try and slow down the progression of dementia causing diseases and hopefully reduce the severity of dementia symptoms. And healthcare professionals will be one key end user of this kind of technology, as they'll have to set up the technology every day with healthcare users. They'll have to know how to interpret the result from the technology and also disseminate the result back to the healthcare user. So it's really important that we find out ways to develop technology in a way that's acceptable for healthcare users to encourage acceptance and use of this technology within clinical practice. So we decided to go out and explore healthcare professionals' key considerations when they're looking at the design, development and implementation of technology for the early detection of dementia causing diseases. So I went out and recruited 11 GPs and 7 secondary care staff using online clinical networks. Then I interviewed them all over video call and in these interviews I explored three sort of key topics. One was around where they would like to see the an early detection tool for dementia being set within the current clinical pathway. We explored their opinions and perspectives on actually giving an early detection of dementia causing diseases and the use of technology to aid this approach. Then we also investigated any challenges they think we might face when implementing such a service within healthcare systems. Then we applied an inductive framework approach to analyse the transcripts. And by this, I literally just mean I went through the transcripts multiple times to familiarise myself with the data. And then without any preconceived theories, I went into the data to pull out different patterns and reoccurring concepts to generate key themes. Then these key themes were discussed within the research project team to further develop, refine and evolve the key themes to make sure they accurately reflected the data. The key themes we identify in the data reflect categories of considerations. One category is around healthcare users. So healthcare professionals were particularly concerned about how we're going to make sure this service is accessible to everyone. So how we're going to make sure we're involving those who aren't maybe in touch with their healthcare as much as they should be, but are at risk of developing dementia causing diseases, and also how we're going to reach those who are digitally excluded. But some healthcare professionals did see how giving this service would be really benefit to the healthcare user by giving them the chance to plan for the future. A second category is around healthcare professionals themselves, as a lot were concerned about how they're going to manage post detection care, because at the time of this study, there was very limited effective interventions that are clinically proven to slow the disease progression of dementia causing diseases. And also healthcare professionals were concerned that having this extra service within the system would overwhelm both primary or secondary care, no matter where you put it. So the most acceptable setting was brain health clinics, which are a combination between research and clinical settings. And the last category is around the technology itself. So a lot of healthcare professionals were really excited about the possibility of longitudinal remote monitoring. But some of them were concerned about the sensitivity and specificity of the technology that's available at the moment and whether it be accurate enough to measure the modalities that it's designed to when compared to paper-based tests that are currently used. So to summarise this work, the three take-home messages is that we need to develop and design and implement digital technology in a way that's accessible to all healthcare users. We also need to provide support to healthcare professionals on how to provide post-detection care 
and also provide them with evidence that shows the sensitivity, specificity and validity of the technology to improve trust. And finally, this work identified that future work needs to centre around developing strategies to support digital health equity so we can make sure that we're being equitable when we're using technology within healthcare systems. And on that, I'd just like to thank the participants and my wonderful co-authors for making this work possible. And if you'd like to read any more about this paper, please scan the QR code in the corner. And thank you all for listening.